today I'm going to show you how to use the transform tool in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode is super cool because we're going over the transform tool which is it's a pretty basic tool but I'm going to show you guys some of the more advanced features of the tool that are going to help you like get more out of the tool. And then later in the episode we're going to show you how to take a picture and actually like warp it so it fits inside of a screen. Like if you had a, a picture of a screen, we're going to use an iPhone today but if you had like a computer screen or whatever it is, we're going to show you how to warp it so it actually looks like it's part of that device. Super cool, you don't want to miss today's episode. So for today we're using an awesome image by David Crew of Mission Beach and uh, to go ahead and start with this episode um, I'm going to duplicate the background layer. So go into our background layer, we're just going to hit Control or Command J and that's going to duplicate it. That's a really good idea if you're going to be transforming anything, you want like a backup copy. Okay, now the transform tool, if you hit the move tool right here there we go. You can see this is part of the transform tool. If you hit show transform controls, it's actually going to pop up these borders. Let's just zoom in so you guys can see these little key points around the image. That's the show transform controls. Now if I click that on and I start clicking on any of these, this is actually enters in what's called the transform tool. So it's basically anytime you see these numbers all across, and I'm going to explain what all these mean, you're in the transform tool. So if I hit escape, I'm back to my move tool. I'm not transforming anything and then I click here and then now we actually are starting to transform. Now if you don't want this transform controls, I prefer that unchecked myself. Um, the best way to do that is by hitting control or command T. There we go and that's going to enter transform mode. So control or command T, now we've got these borders here and all of our numbers here on the top means we're ready to transform. So you can do a ton with the transform. Um, clicking any side, basically outside of the image and clicking and rotating is going to rotate your image. You can hold down shift to make sure it stays like at increments. So it's going to stay there at 15 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, all the way to the 90. And the other way, it works both ways, everybody. <laughs> all right. So that's one way you can, you can transform. Now, the other way you can transform is just by simply clicking any of these corners and dragging them in. So you've got, you know, basically scale transform. You can click inside or outside here. Well, if you click outside, it's going to rotate. But if you click inside of the document, there we go. It's going to move it around. Now, you guys probably knew all this. There are a couple keyboard shortcuts that make this a lot more powerful. So let's go ahead and look at those. Our keyboard shortcuts, we're going to focus on pretty much everything in Photoshop, keyboard shortcut wise, is going to be Shift, Option, or Command. So that's pretty much all you ever need to know when you're transforming something. All right, so if I, we already looked at what Shift does, right? If I'm holding down Shift, it's going to make sure it stays at equal increments there. There we go. Now, let's say I grab one of these corners and I start bringing it down. If I hold down shift, what that's going to do is it's going to constrain the proportions. So it's not going to allow me to stretch out someone's face really weird or anything like that. If I hold down shift and option, what it's going to do is it's going to actually transform about the center point of the image. Now this center point right here, we're, we can actually change that point or the control point. We can change that at any time to go any place we want. So it's here in the middle right now. I'm going to hold down shift and option and bring this larger or smaller. Now let's say I wanted to change my point right up there. I'm going to hold shift and option now and you're going to see it's going to change it about that point instead of about the center, which can be super helpful. We're going to show you in a little bit when you're actually using the iPhone. Okay, now if we want to change our perspective with this image, all we have to do is hold down the control or the command key and click on any one of these little points. So control or command, let's click on the top and now we can see we can shear this image horizontally, or if we click on the side, we can shear this image vertically, which is really cool. So you can probably already start to tell, oh, that's how you get it to actually fit into a screen. You can just, you know, shear it that way. Now, another thing we can do is holding down control or command, I can click on any one of these corners and I can define these corners however I'd like as well. So it's the same image, but let's say we, you know, putting it on the, flat screen image, a flat screen TV that we were viewing from the side or something. You can imagine by using just holding down control and changing all these points, you can actually control exactly what your image looks like and make it look like it's in perspective. All right, so now that we know a bunch of those keyboard shortcuts, let's go ahead and get this into the iPhone and make it look realistic. So first thing we're going to do, let's go ahead and 
zoom out here, I'm going to grab layer one, and we're just going to click and drag, same tool, just the move tool from one image to the other, and hit F for full screen. And uh, that's actually a picture of my hand we took earlier for today's tutorial. So we're going to make it look like this, um, this beach is actually in the iPhone screen. There are a couple things we need to do before we're ready to actually place the beach on the screen. And the first is creating a selection that we're going to use to define a layer mask. OK, so how do we do that? Well, let's go ahead and make the beach invisible. Now, we'll click on our background layer. I'm going to zoom in. And for this, you know what? I'm going to just grab my mag like polygonal lasso tool. That just allows me to create straight lines. So if I click a couple of times, it's just going to create a point in between them, a bunch of straight lines, right? Let's deselect. And basically, all I need to do is click on the four corners to make my selection. So we're going to click on the first corner, all right, right down here to the second corner. Now, if you're zoomed in and you want to move around your image, just hold down the spacebar key. That's going to allow you to move down your image. So spacebar, I let go of the spacebar, and I'm back to using my tool. There we go. Bottom right corner, bottom left corner, and going up to the top here, you're going to see a little O right next to your lasso tool. You can see it there, and that's going to complete the selection for you. There we go. So let's click there, and that makes our selection. So we've selected where we want the image to actually be, Let's go ahead and use that to define a layer mask. So now let's turn our layer back on. OK, there we go. And to de define this layer mask, all we have to do is click right here on the layer mask button. And it's going to turn the selection into a layer mask automatically. There we go. So having that selection as a layer mask, now the image is only going to be visible where the iPhone screen is. All right, there's a lot more cool stuff coming up. So we have that. Uh, basically all set up. And it looks great, except let's say we wanted to move it. If I just grab my Move tool now and start moving this around, what happens is my image is going to move around, but it's, go it's going to get off the screen as well. We don't want that. Now, we can change that property by unlinking the, la the, the last with the layer, the layer mask with the layer. OK, so unlinking those two. Basically, all we have to do is click on this little chain link between the layer and the layer mask. So let's click on that. It's going to unlink the two. Now, if I want to move my layer, let's click on the layer itself. If I grab my Move tool, I can move the layer itself, and my layer mask is going to stay in place, which is very, very cool. So now we're ready to start using our Transform tool to make it actually look like it's in perspective in, in the right plane for our image. So I'm going to hit Controller Command T, and there we can see the borders of our image. Even though I can't see the image outside of the layer mask, I can see the borders. So let's start off. I'm going to hold down the Shift key, and we're going to click on this top point and just bring it down right to about there. Let's go ahead and get it right in about perspective. OK, that looks great. Now, let's say I want to rotate this image as well. I'd, I'd want to rotate it around so this, you know, um, the bottom line and the left line, they line up to what's actually on the phone. Now, if I just click here and start rotating, that's fine, but I'd have to rotate this and then move it and things like that. What if I wanted to rotate it around the bottom left point. Well, you can actually control what point the image rotates. We looked at this a little earlier. I'm going to show you a quicker, easier way to do that. Up here on the very top, next to where you see x and y and width and height and things like that, you're going to see basically a grid of squares. Now, by default, the center square is going to be lit up. It's going to be white, and that's where the reference point location is. Now, if we change the reference point, I'm going to just click on this bottom left square. That's going to be the reference point location. So now if I rotate, check that out. It's going to rotate on the bottom left. So I don't have to worry about resizing and positioning my image every time I'm actually going to make a change. It's already going to rotate about that space, which is exactly what we want. Now, all these other numbers correlate to position. So I can change my x position if I want to. I can change my y position. That's going to move up and down. I could change my width. Let's just undo that. I could change my height. Let's undo that too. And I can type in an angle if I want. And then we have horizontal and vertical shear. So now let's use one of those tips that we learned earlier. You're holding down the control or the command key, because that's super powerful when we're uh, actually editing an image and transforming in Photoshop. So I'm going to hold down control or command. I want this line to stay in about the same place, but I want this line to push over, right? Because we want it to look like it's in the right perspective. So I'm going to hold, I'm going to basically grab this point up here holding Control or Command, and push it over so our bottom line, you can see, is staying in place. I can basically change whatever position I want to actually match my perspective. All right, 
that looks great. And now we're almost there. You can see I just have a little bit of an area. I want this line to be basically parallel with the top of the iPhone. So let's zoom out there just a little bit. And what I'm going to do is hold down Control or Command. There we go. And push this right up there. All right. And there we go. We're getting it in the right perspective. Now, the cool part here is this is a landscape, which most of the time you don't want to stretch and pull things around because you're going to notice them quite a bit, like someone's face, right? Like If you stretch it out, it's going to look really bad. A lot of the time with landscapes, you can stretch them a little bit more and uh, get a little more creative. So let's try that. I'm here. The, the image looks like it's on my phone, um, but let's say I want to include a little bit more of the pier. Well, in this case, I'm just going to grab this point on the right, and I'm going to just push it here on to the left. If I wanted to go all the way, I could, but that doesn't. It starts to look kind of weird. But let's say I want to include the entire pier. I can do that. And because I've got all my, um, basically all my points correctly in place, it's going to look like it's in perspective, which is very, very cool. So that looks great. I'm going to hit this check box, and that's going to complete our transformation, making it look like the image is actually on the iPhone. OK, now, if this is as far as you want to go, we've taught you guys how to use the transform tool. That's totally cool. I'm going to just take it up one notch. We're going to do a couple more things to make it look a little bit more realistic. OK, first thing is, let's just zoom in here. I'm going to put a little bit of a blur around the edge of my layer mask. OK, the, the layer mask, we used a lasso tool, and it was a very sharp edge. So we're just going to click on our layer mask, and I'm going to give this a very small blur, and that's going to help it actually match what's going on in the image. There we go. OK, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm going to use the same tool. Let's go to our polygonal lasso tool. I'm just going to create basically a triangle. There we go, basically a triangle. I will create a triangle <laughs> on the top right of the screen. And we're going to use our gradient tool now. So we've created a selection. Let's hit G for the gradient tool. I'm going to use the foreground to transparent gradient, going from white to transparent. Let's hit OK there. And now, basically, we're going to go from white to transparent, and I'm going to paint right in here. So white over here, and it'll be transparent white where I end up. There we go. So you can see that's just a gradient, and because I've already defined my selection, that's the only place it shows up. Now, let's hit Command-D to deselect. We've got our gradient. I'm, I'm creating that like you know key iPhone look where it's got the glare on the, uh, on the side of the screen there. Now, let's say I want this to only be visible where the screen is. I don't need it to be visible where my thumb is, right? Well, we've already defined a layer mask for this layer. I can actually just use the exact same layer mask. So what I'm going to do is basically use a clipping mask to make this layer defined only visible where the underlying layer is visible. It sounds super complex, but when I do it, you'll be like, oh, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. OK, all you have to do is right click here outside of your layer and go to Create Clipping Mask. There we go. And now this layer is only going to be visible where the underlying layer is visible. So it's only going to be visible right here. Let's just lower our opacity, give it a little bit more of a realistic feel. There we go. That's cool. Now, if I wanted to move this layer, I could still do that. Using my Move tool, I can move this layer and change my glare. And it's only going to be visible where this layer is visible, because we used a clipping mask. I can hit Command-T to transform, and I can rotate. I can change my glare any way I want to. And it's going to stay visible only within the iPhone, which I think is super, super cool. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and take a look at the before and the after. Here's our before with just a blank screen. And here's our after with a beautiful picture of Mission Beach. All right, guys, thanks so much. Just remember when you're using the transform tool, first hit Control or Command T to activate the tool, and then bring your cursor to any one of the points around your image. You're going to want to click on the Shift option or control and each of those is going to give you a little bit something different and if you want to fit an image into something like an iphone screen just remember to change your little control point in this case we use the bottom left control point and rotate it around so it fit exactly into the screen now if you guys want to learn more about photoshop and photography just subscribe to our youtube channel because we receive we don't receive, we send out free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week. And if you have an idea for a new episode or a question about today's episode, just leave it in a comment right down below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks again, guys, and I'll learn you later. Bye, everyone. Whew, I think we had enough bloopers that time. Cool. Thanks so much for watching today's episode. And how to actually. Thanks for watching. Blah, blah, blah. I hope it helped learn how to learn. <laughs>
today's broadcast is rough. Thank <laughs> you.